Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform an intradermal injection and um, <clears throat> what you're going to need is obviously to wash your hands, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly and then um, have your table set up with all your supplies. You're going to need three cotton balls, you're going to need a, a syringe, we use a 27 gauge one half inch uh, needle um, and we also use uh, the sodium chloride and you'll need um, a little spot band-aid. Okay? So after washing your hands, you're going to um, first of all introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Carlos and I'm your medical assistant. Doctor wants me to perform an intradermal injection. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You want to get consent from the patient. It's not okay to just assume that, it's, that the patient will be okay with this. So always get consent. Um, after the patient has said that it's okay, you want to make sure you have the right patient. The last thing you want to do is give this injection to the wrong person. So can you state your first and last name for me, please? My name is Jane Doe. Jane Doe. Okay, very good. And your date of birth? Um, 8-12-92. Okay, so you're going to take that information and compare it to the doctor's order. Okay, once you've confirmed that this is the right patient, then um, you need to also find out if the patient has allergies to anything that we're going to be using. So be specific when you ask this question. So Jane, are you allergic to sodium chloride? Mm -mm. How about adhesive on tape? No. no? What about metal? You'll be using a metal needle. How about cotton? Mm -mm. No allergies? Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, do you have a preference on which arm you'd like for me to perform this uh, procedure on? on? All right. Okay. So the patient wants us to use the right side. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our, our gloves on. I want to make sure that when you put your gloves on that you remember that this is a clean, you know, the hands now have uh, clean gloves on. And I don't want you to touch anything that might contaminate your gloves, like the sharps container, maybe the surface of the table. Certainly it's not okay to... Uh, to scratch, um, you, you might pick up contamination that you might spread onto the patient. So once you put your gloves on, make sure that they stay clean. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I want you to do is have the patient position themselves in a way that's comfortable for them, but also comfortable for you. If the patient is sitting too far back and you have to lean forward, you know, you're going to probably start to feel that fatigue on your back. So have the patient come forward. And the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the middle third of the forearm. This is the forearm right here, okay? So we're going to locate the middle third starting from the bend of the arm at the elbow all the way down to the wrist. This is the, the section that we call the forearm. And we want to find the middle third in that, in that area of the arm, okay? So up here is the upper third, down here is the bottom third, and then between these two fingers is your middle third. Okay, so we're looking for the middle third of the arm. It's important to find that spot and to give the injection somewhere in the middle third so that when the patient returns for this reading, you kind of know where to go. Now, you may know where to, where to find um, that injection, but uh, let's say the patient comes back at a day that you're off and someone else goes to, to read it. If they can't find it because it's somewhere hidden, <coughs> they might have a hard time with the reading. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some alcohol and I'm going to clean in that middle third using small to larger circles, okay? And we're going to press pretty hard uh, to try to clean that forearm as much as we can. And then we're going to throw that cotton ball over in the trash. Notice how I try to keep all of my clean supplies on the paper and then I keep throwing away my, my dirty supplies as I generate dirty supplies, okay? Now while that's drying, we want to give it 30 seconds to dry. We're going to go ahead and um, start drawing up the medication. Now to do that, we're going to take this lid off and throw that in the trash. And we're going to take a look at our label. We're going to read the label. You need to read everything on this label very carefully because this label has to tell you, um, <clears throat> this label will tell you if this is the medication the doctor is ordering. So I can see that this is a 30 ml multiple dose bacteriostatic 0.9% sodium chloride and that it's for injection, it's in injection grade. And, uh, and I'm going to read all the little, uh, little information all the way down to the expiration date to make sure that this medication is not expired and that I understand all the guidelines for using this medication, right? So um, now that I have had a chance to read that label, I'm going to go ahead and set that down and now I'm going to start prepping my syringe. Okay, so the way I do that is I'm going to take this back half of the packaging off and throw it in the trash. I'm just going to place that syringe down, leaving it in its cradle um, until I'm ready to actually pick it up and, and start prepping it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to take the plunger and just loosen it by pulling it all the way down and pushing it all the way back up. The plunger tends to get stuck 
after sitting there for weeks and weeks, maybe even months and months. And so we wanna make sure we loosen it first. The next thing I'm gonna do, if you can kind of draw in a little bit closer, is I'm gonna take my thumb and index finger and I'm gonna grab the hub of the needle, okay? Not the cap, not the syringe, but the actual middle section there called the hub of the needle. I'm gonna grab that with my thumb and index finger like this and press hard, but I'm gonna also take these remaining fingers in the palm of my hand and grab that syringe barrel. So with two fingers, I'm holding the hub. With the rest of my hand, I'm holding the barrel. Then I'm gonna take the other hand and I'm going to um, push up on that cap. Okay, so what I've done is I've pulled the hub down, but I've pushed the cap up. And I'm doing this to just loosen the cap, right? I wanna loosen the cap, but I don't wanna take it off, okay? At the same time, when I take the cap off, I don't wanna loosen the hub, because the hub just sort of slips over the syringe and we don't want that to loosen. So to make sure that that hub is still secure, you might wanna pull it down a little bit, but you, you can see that the, the cap is, is loosened, okay? So now that's prepped and ready to go. It takes a little practice to learn to do that, but um, now that the syringe is ready to go, I'm gonna take an opportunity, a second opportunity, to make sure that I still have the right medication. So many of these labels look like other medication labels, and sometimes medication names sound like other medications, and it's so easy to get the wrong medication. So again, we're gonna look at the doctor's order, we're gonna read the label to make sure we have the right medication. Take your time to review this label. Um, it's not a good feeling to get out there and give somebody an injection of medication um, that was not ordered by the doctor. And as much as that seems impossible to do, it's very easy to do, okay? So yes, I still have the right medication and I'm ready to go. I need to prep the bottle before I draw the medication out. So I'm gonna take some alcohol with my second cotton ball and I'm going to um, take my thumb and I'm gonna press into that cotton ball which is gonna press into the stopper of the, the vial and I'm gonna go back and forth like this. Pressing hard enough like this is going to allow the alcohol to reach into the grooves that are on that um, vial lid, okay? Give that a few seconds to dry, and now my syringe is prepped and my vial is prepped, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now slide the cap off, just slide it off with one hand. Notice how I'm just using one hand. I'm not taking my second hand to pull the, the lid off. I'm just gonna slide the cap off. I'm gonna draw my plunger down to point zero 0.05, which is five little lines down from the big line. Okay, so 0 0.05, you need to make sure you're right on uh, the right dose, 0 0.05. And then I'm gonna take my syringe with that little bit of air drawn into it. I'm gonna take my syringe needle and I'm gonna place it into the rubber stopper. Notice how I'm doing this one-handed. If I were to hold this while I'm putting the needle in, I might stick myself with the needle. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna hold it like this. This is real tricky. For some people, this is really hard to understand. But I'm gonna take my index and middle finger and place it at the neck of the vial, and then my thumb and index finger, I'm sorry, my thumb and ring finger, and I'm gonna hold the syringe. So I'm holding it like this, okay? Everybody can do this, you just have to practice. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that air up into the vial, and you'll notice that there are two, a couple of little bubbles went into the vial. And, uh, and now I'm ready to withdraw the medication. Okay, and I'll explain in, in class why it's so important to do that. We're gonna draw the medication way down. Notice how I'm going way down the syringe. Um, once I get down pretty far, I'm gonna now tap it, give it a couple of taps, and that's gonna push all the bubbles to the top. Uh, you wanna make sure all those little bubbles go all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna push the plunger, forcing those bubbles that were at the top now back up into the vial, okay? And then I'm gonna return the stopper to that 0 0.05. Now in class, I may give you a different order for medication, but uh, for now, just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna, we're gonna go with 0 0.05, okay? Now I'm gonna set that down, and uh, this time very carefully holding the vial with one hand, I'm gonna grab the syringe with the other hand and pull it away so that it's completely separated from the vial. Now, if you need to go to your patient's room, at this point you would just single-handedly put the lid back on. We're not using two hands to put the lid on, just single-handedly. And this is how we would go to the patient's room with our doctor's order, okay? Um, but since the patient is already here, we're going to, uh, we're gonna just leave it here. Now, this is my third label check. 
Okay, so just before I, I head to the patient to give the injection, I'm going to check my label now for the third time. And uh, this is my last chance to make sure I have the right medication. Okay, so everything still looks good and um, we're ready to go. I like to get the band aid ready um, before. And by the way, a lot of these um, intradermal injections require that you do not put a band aid on the patient after you perform the procedure, but because we're in class and it might bleed a little bit, I'd rather it be covered. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I want you to stand up at this point. I don't want you to perform this procedure sitting down, okay? So you're gonna stand up, and with one hand you're going to pull uh, the syringe away from the cradle, the little packaging cradle, and with one hand also you're gonna slip your cap off, okay? I want you to now hold your syringe with four fingers and a thumb and the bevel of the needle facing up. The bevel is that sharp cut end, okay? Please don't hold it like this, okay? Please don't hold it like this. I want you to hold it very carefully with four fingertips and a thumb and your fingers should be standing up like this, okay? Don't draw blood with your fingers lying down this way. I'm sorry, don't perform this injection with your fingers lying down. Have them standing up. Then with your non-dominant hand, you're going to come to the side and pull the skin down. Okay? Don't pull it to the side. You want to pull it down from the side. I mean from the side because I want to leave this other side open for the injection. So we're going to pull the skin tight, and we're going to approach the, vein, approach the arm, and then very, very gently um, we're going to get ready for the procedure. But I want to warn the patient, ma'am, you're going to fill a stick, Pull the skin tight and drop the needle barely below uh, the skin, okay? That bevel has to disappear. As soon as that bevel disappears, you're going to let go of the skin, but notice how I followed, back, followed the skin back with the needle, and then I'm going to reach back and give the injection. But also notice at this point, my hand is completely anchored to her arm, okay? I'm going to give that injection. Notice there's no leakage. And then we're immediately, we're going to take this needle with one hand and without crossing over, we're going to get rid of our needle. The way I want you to get rid of your needle is I just want you to toss it in there and then lift the bottom up. Okay, don't put your fingers in there, just toss it in there and lift the bottom up and it'll drop into the main compartment. Okay, at this point, <coughs> um, we're done and it's our responsibility to give the patient what I call post-injection instructions. And um, those instructions are to remember to return within 48 to 72 hours to have this read, okay? Um, it is today, Tuesday, so you need to come back on Thursday um, to have it read, 48 to 72 hours. Um, at this point, we're also going to put the Band-Aid on. You can see there's a little bit of bleeding. Normally out there, you wouldn't put a Band-Aid because we don't want to irritate it, but for class, uh, for purposes of classroom, uh, instruction, I want to make sure that these are covered. I don't want that bleeding to, to, go, to get on anyone. Okay? And that's it. Thank you.